without that spirit, that rebellion of, of I am going, you, you shall not dominate me. Even if you dominate me, you shall not dominate me. Me living and existing is my act of rebellion. My very existence is a radical act. What, what is it about singing that leaves you with this kind of fear? So why do you have? Are you about that? to get me all into my like yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit? I just yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay, so the funny thing is, is uh, this is the long answer. Um, when I was younger, I had a record deal uh, when I was 13, and you know it didn't go well and stuff like that. And I think throughout my life, I've had such a, a reverence for music. It's healed me. I use it in so many ways throughout my life. Um, and singing and singers, I have such respect for them, you know, um, in a way, again, placing, talk about placing folks on a pedestal, you know, um, that's what I do with singers and musicians. I'm in so awe of the ability to use your instrument in that way. And so I oftentimes found myself from the time I was a kid up until now, loving to sing, but not loving to sing it for people. Um, because I, I think because I faced a lot of uh, uh, criticism when I was young about it, you know, a lot of people kind of like had their hands on my voice. And so it just made me retreat and be like, I don't want to do this and I don't want anybody touching me. But I would sing just not in front of anyone, like no one, you know, um, it was even something, you know, my family, my, nobody, nobody would ever hear me sing. Um, and so it's interesting how the world works and where it forces you to confront all your shit. You know, um, that's the thing about these, these projects that come to me. Oftentimes they come and I realize that, oh, this is coming to me because Letty is forcing me to work through my own shit you know, not just with my voice. There's so, I mean, Lovecraft Country cost me so much when I tell you. There was so much I had to bring to the off, uh, altar, you know, the offering, the sacrifice, um, what it demanded of me. Um, but it forces you to grow, you know, in your art, in your craft, in, your, in my womanhood. Um, but it is interesting. I can, I can point to so many different roles and, and there was things in my life I had to work through that the character demanded I work through it. Now, um, because of, I imagine Underground was also probably somewhat of an emotional experience as well. Mm -hmm. did, did doing Underground, did that help you with Lovecraft Country? Or I mean, what, did Lovecraft Country, dredge, like did that dredge up some of, some of the same things from that you experienced maybe in Underground or, or were they different because you'd already been through it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. It's interesting. I feel that um, the thing about the stories of Underground and Lovecraft is they're both very ancient, they're very ancestral. Um, I mean, and so it forces you as an artist to go back into your history. It forces you to activate that blood memory. Um, and and so without a Rosa Lee existing, you cannot have a Letty, literally. Um, without the Rosa Lees of the world, you know, we come from that level of resilience. The fact that our folks, our kinfolk survived and whether they were able to escape slavery or not, they still fucking survived. We know this, you and I are proof of it because we're here, right? Um, Without that spirit, that rebellion of, of I am going, you, you shall not dominate me. Even if you dominate me, you shall not dominate me. Me living and existing is my act of rebellion. My very existence is a radical act. You arguably couldn't have had a Letty, right? Um, and so I think the process of me experiencing that and living that for two seasons absolutely informed my approach with Letty, without a doubt. Um, you know, I had already done the history, the work in myself of going back and reading the Bullwhip days and like really diving into, you know, the slave narratives and hearing firsthand accounts of what it was like to be an enslaved woman, right? 
incidents in the life of a slave girl. Like you can't, once you know it, once you see it, once you experience it, you can't unlearn it. That's in our DNA, it's in our blood. We know it, it's familiar. So when you, when you approach a Letty and you're, and, and I'm, you know, I, I go back to that stuff. I go back to Ida B. Wells, I go back, but then you build on that and you've got, oh, a Gwendolyn Brooks. You've got, you know, a Lorraine Hansberry, you know, you've got a James Baldwin, you've got these folks who are not so removed from that, right? Um, it, it, it was essential to understand where we were coming from, you know, um, to understand why our dignity was so important to us in the 1950s, to understand why dressing a certain way and walking around the world and, and carrying yourself with a level of pride and dignity was so important to our folks. Why speaking well and, and seeking to read books and that rush, that desire to vote, that desire to educate ourselves, that desire to push our race forward. That was a saying, like they would say all the time, we got to push our race forward. You know, that was driven so much by the Rosalies of the world, you know. Um, and then on top of the fact, like working with Misha, Lovecraft Country was our technically third season of TV together. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of worked through all of our shit <laughs> in the first two seasons of Underground. So by the time we got to Lovecraft, oh, we, it was on. You know, we were off to the races. Our, our approach with each other, we had the second hand going, you know, it, it was so fluid and natural. I understood her writing and she understood my process. And we didn't have to waste that time of like learning each other's love language you know, which we did do a lot of on Underground. <laughs> yeah, I know that you guys didn't have the rosiest start off to your relationship. That's but, uh, calling it lightly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you obviously you eventually worked it out. Um, now, given where the response has been, and um, again, both critical and just word of mouth in these streets, uh, what do you know about uh, the prospects of another season of Lovecraft Country? You gotta ask the suits, cause I mean, literally, <laughs> you you know as much as I know. I know okay. nothing. You know, I know nothing. Y'all can't um, y'all can't get our appetite all wetted up. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like that comes rude. back. Like, rude. Right? That, that would be super rude. Right? I, I mean, uh, I don't know. I would love it, of course. The whole cast, like all of us, we love our characters. We all became a family. Let's you know. Let me say that. Like, we became a family. Because this project demanded so much of us. You know, we had rituals. Um, I mean, there were moments Jonathan and I was praying together before the day was about to begin, or me, Michael, and Jonathan. You know, we had this fist bump going before each take. No matter where we were, we had to do the fist bump before each take. Because we had to ground each other and be like, I got you, you know. Um, you got me. Um, we would love a season two. I don't know. <laughs> Call HBO, ask them, because they got right. they got to decide it. You know, everybody out there, y'all tweet and email or HBO. Make them bring this. Uh, make sure that Lovecraft Country comes back. It cannot. Yeah, it it needs to keep going. Um, for our own mental sanity, we need it. Mm -hmm.